space travel has long been a testament to human ingenuity, yet it remains fraught with significant challenges, none more pressing than the development of reusable heat shield technology. NASA's Space Shuttle Legacy serves as a clear example, with its reliance on thousands of handcrafted components and rigorous inspections after every mission, making the vision of frequent, affordable space travel seem out of reach. Starship is designed to tackle these challenges head-on, aiming to revolutionize space travel by creating a more economical solution. However, recent tests of Starship's heat shield have highlighted difficult realities. It remains a critical weak point. Even Elon Musk has acknowledged that re-entry heat protection represents the greatest technical hurdle SpaceX currently faces, emphasizing the limitations of previous heat shield designs in achieving true rapid reusability. In this context, Sierra Space has made a groundbreaking leap forward with the heat shield technology for its Dream Chaser spacecraft. The company's leadership asserts that this innovation will dramatically enhance the reusability of its thermal protection system. While it remains to be seen if these shields will outperform starships, Sierra Space is confident that they have surpassed NASA's 1980s era technology, marking a promising step toward the next generation of reusable spacecraft. The new tiles installed on the Dream Chaser orbital vehicle use a combination of silicon carbide and carbon fibers, offering high durability, robust protection, and stable flight dynamics. Moreover, new manufacturing techniques make producing these tiles far less labor-intensive. Set to be used on Sierra Space's Dream Chaser, the first commercial wing spacecraft designed to carry cargo to low Earth orbit, this innovation is poised for its true test with Dream Chaser's maiden launch. Exciting, isn't it? Imagine witnessing a commercial spacecraft delivering cargo to the ISS, evoking the golden age of the space shuttle. If you're just as thrilled as I am, comment yes below. Don't forget to like this video to motivate us to keep bringing you fresh content every day. Confident in its technology as it may be, Dream Chaser is not without challenges, particularly delays, an issue familiar across the aerospace industry. Dream Chaser is based on NASA's HL-20 design concept from the 1990s. During a 2013 test, the spacecraft failed to deploy part of its landing gear, skidding along the runway. Since then, the company has focused on a cargo version intended to complete seven missions by delivering up to 5,400 kilos of supplies to the ISS. With operations originally slated to start last year, Sierra Space signed a Memorandum of Understanding with Spaceport America to utilize its 3,600-meter runway in southern New Mexico. The company is also expanding the list of compatible landing sites for Dream Chaser, which includes NASA's shuttle landing facility at Kennedy Space Center, as well as airports in Alabama, Japan, and Spaceport Cornwall in the UK. However, Sierra Space has already missed its original launch schedule by nearly two years. Spokesperson Alex Walker recently announced that the long-anticipated maiden cargo flight of the Dream Chaser spacecraft has been postponed to May of next year. This inaugural flight will be carried out by the spacecraft named Tenacity. While Tenacity was delivered to NASA's Neil Armstrong test facility as early as May, ongoing tests appear to have revealed issues requiring additional work. The company is taking extra time to refine the spacecraft ensuring it is fully prepped for its first mission. This cautious approach is understandable given the high expectations surrounding Dream Chaser. Not only are Sierra Space officials and NASA eagerly anticipating its flight, but the public is also looking forward to what many see as a symbolic return to the glory days of winged spacecraft. Such heightened expectations have likely prompted the company and its engineers to adopt a meticulous approach to testing. While delays are disappointing, they are not without merit if they lead to a flawless maiden flight. Transparency from Sierra Space, including regular updates on the spacecraft's progress, helps maintain confidence in the project despite the wait. Sierra Space recently provided an update on the progress of its Shooting Star cargo modules, which are nearing completion, demonstrating the company's readiness to accelerate the pace of future launches. Once the first Dream Chaser takes off, Subsequent cargo missions could proceed quickly, depending, of course, on the condition of Dream Chaser after its return to Earth. Alongside the successful testing of Tenacity, Sierra Space is also constructing its second spaceplane, named Reverence. For the first time, 
we are witnessing the emergence of a second space plane being gradually perfected right within the factory. Dream Chaser Reverence is currently in production, along with its Shooting Star Cargo Module, at Sierra Space's Dream Factory in Colorado. This is the second space plane in our Dream Chaser fleet, which will help carry cargo to the space station. We designed each vehicle for 15 missions, but we think we're going to exceed that, said Sierra Space Vice President. Tenacity is the first, and Reverence is going through the factory, so we believe we're well positioned to support not only NASA, but also long-term visions of commercializing the workforce. Sierra Space announced the current planned flight schedule for Tenacity includes four initial flights, with the fifth being the debut of Reverence. This effort aligns with Sierra Space's long-term goals and underscores their reputation as the second SpaceX, a moniker they are working hard to earn. However, the most exciting prospect lies in the Dream Chaser's potential for crew-carrying capability. After all, the ultimate dream is to turn Dream Chaser into a human transport vehicle. Regarding Reverence, there has been no confirmation that it will be the second version of the space plane that Sierra Space refers to as DC-200. However, the possibility remains that it could be a new crew-capable vehicle. Why do I say this? Last year in an interview, the Vice President stated, Right now, we're focused on getting a new Dream Chaser ready in the 26th timeframe. There's still a lot of work to do on the DC-200, but we remain very focused on it. While this doesn't directly address reverence, the time frame around 2026 seems coincidental. Therefore, we're still hoping for official information from the company about reverence shortly. Now let's refresh our spirits and return to the first flight of Dream Chaser. Once tenacity reaches the 80% completion mark for spaceflight readiness, how will it approach and dock with the ISS? After tenacity and Shooting Star complete their final environmental testing at Armstrong, NASA will ship the space plane to Kennedy to start loading and preparing it for launch. Tenacity will hitch a ride to LEO, packed inside a payload fairing atop a ULA Vulcan rocket. Here are the main phases of Tenacity's mission to and from the ISS. Launch. With wings folded and mated with shooting star, Tenacity will launch inside a 5-meter fairing atop a ULA Vulcan rocket. Orbit insertion. The payload fairing separates in the Centaur portion of the rocket pushes Tenacity into orbit. ISS approach. From a lower and faster orbit, Tenacity catches up with the International Space Station, ISS, until it reaches the station's A-bar point, directly between Earth and the station. The ISS will guide Tenacity into position, allowing its robotic arm to retrieve the spacecraft. Docking and resupply, after unloading and reloading cargo, Tenacity and Shooting Star will push off from the ISS 35 to 75 days later. Shooting Star will then detach for eventual burnup upon re-entry. Re-entry and landing. Approaching from a route over the West Coast in Central America, Tenacity re-enters the atmosphere at 17,000 miles per hour and glides to a landing at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. This flight is pivotal, not just for Sierra Space, but for the future of space transportation. Dream Chaser's first mission will showcase its unique design capabilities, setting it apart from other cargo spacecraft like SpaceX's Cargo Dragon and Northrop Grumman's Cygnus. Unlike traditional capsules, the Dream Chaser is a wing space plane capable of landing on conventional runways. This feature promises gentler payload recovery and broader operational flexibility. Its ability to return uncrewed payloads to Earth fills a critical gap in existing infrastructure, where currently only Cargo Dragon offers this functionality. This capability is particularly valuable for transporting delicate scientific experiments or specialized hardware requiring rapid analysis or reuse. The Dream Chaser's redundancy ensures uninterrupted resupply missions to the ISS, even in the event of unexpected failures with Falcon 9 or other spacecraft. As Sierra Space gears up for Dream Chaser's maiden flight, its innovative approach highlights the growing diversity of solutions in space exploration. While its primary role focuses on resupplying the ISS, Dream Chaser is designed to support a wide array of future applications. These include transporting payloads for private companies, conducting advanced microgravity experiments, and serving as a platform for orbital manufacturing. Looking to the future, Dream Chaser represents a pivotal step toward establishing a robust and sustainable space economy. 
All eyes are now on Sierra Space as Dream Chaser undergoes its final testing phases. A successful first mission would not only validate years of hard work and innovation, but also position Sierra Space as a major contender in the evolving landscape of space logistics. Despite the challenges ahead, Dream Chaser holds the potential to revolutionize how humanity accesses and utilizes space. The world waits with anticipation to see if this groundbreaking spacecraft can achieve its ambitious objectives and fulfill its extraordinary promise. That wraps up today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.